Yo, what's up everybody? Thanks for tuning in again. Today I'm going to be actually doing a two-part series about eggs. On the first part, I'm going to be talking about the best way to shop for eggs or the best eggs that you can buy. And in the second part, I'm going to be talking about the best way to consume eggs. You know, there's a lot of misconception that comes when we're talking about this topic. You know, we've got questions like, should I just eat the whites? Should I just eat the yolks? If I do eat the yolk, is the cholesterol going to, you know, cause heart disease? Um, is there a difference between white eggs and brown eggs, you know, or do they just make brown eggs so they can charge me more money? Um, does it matter how I cook them? You know, should I cook them? If I eat them raw, am I going to get salmonella poisoning and die? You know, <laughs> these are a few of the different topics that I'm going to be talking about here over the next two videos, but basically eggs are a very inexpensive way to get a lot of high quality nutrients and very high quality fats and proteins. You know, and it doesn't really matter that, you know, organizations like the USDA um, refuse to acknowledge that there's a direct link between the food that the chickens are fed and the nutritional value of their eggs. You know, these organizations are heavily funded and influenced by um, big wealthy food manufacturers you know all you've got to do is look into these kind of things for yourselves it takes about two seconds to come up with a common sense um, conclusion of crap in equals crap out you know so we easily understand this when we're talking about pregnant women you know like what they should and shouldn't eat because we know it's going to affect the baby that's being produced inside of them so why would this be any different when we're talking about plants and animals you know produce that's raised in nutrient depleted soils obviously means that it too is going to be nutrient depleted you know and in this case we've got animals that are being raised in cages they can't move around they've got no sunlight they're fed all sorts of different crap that I'll be talking about in a minute you know they can't produce healthy offspring I mean honestly which would you rather eat eggs produced by chickens that are stuffed in small cages with you know multiple other birds you know they have no room to move around, they get no sunlight, which means their body can't produce vitamin D, and they're fed all sorts of different things. We've got soy, corn, cottonseed meal, and those are the top three genetically modified foods in the United States. You know, and on top of those, they, they also use um, other synthetic additives. You know, or would you rather eat eggs from chickens that are free to roam outside with plenty of space, they're on a grass field, they're in the sun, which means their bodies now get to produce vitamin D, and they're fed their natural diet, you know, which consists of seeds, green plants, insects, and worms. You know, and obviously if they are organic, then that means the food they're eating also, also has to be organic as well. So in a future video, I'll be talking about genetically modified foods and um, some of the effects on the body and stuff like that. But um, a study that I uh, came across recently, it actually came out in November of 2007, um, it's by Mother Earth News, and they showed that organically fed, cage-free or free-range chickens produce eggs that have a third less cholesterol, a fourth less saturated fat, two-thirds more vitamin A, two times more omega-3 fatty acids, three times more vitamin E, and seven times more beta-carotene than conventional or commercially raised eggs. You know, in another study um, was a British survey, and it showed that 23% of the conventional egg farms tested positive t um, for salmonella, compared to only 4.4% of the organic egg farms that were tested um, were infected. You know, and of the 23% that tested positive, it was very prevalent in um, the farms that were in the large holding size category for this study. And in this study, the large holding size category was 30,000 birds or more. And it's very common to find commercial, commercially or conventionally raised egg farms containing over half a million chickens. So, very safe to say that a lot of these eggs are possibly infected with salmonella. Um, an interesting thing you guys might like to take a look at is if you Google images of caged chickens. You know, now even if you're not concerned with your own health, hopefully um, you care enough about animals to know that the way they're raising these things in these poor conditions or torturous conditions, it's really, it's not acceptable. And every time you buy conventional or, co or commercially raised um, animal products, you're basically supporting how they're raising these animals. You know, your dollar speaks louder than anything. And also another interesting thing, you know, because they're raising them and feeding them this poorly, they also have to give the, the animals doses of antibiotics so they don't get sick and die. And of course, those antibiotics get into the eggs or into the chicken meat, which we then eat. 
You know, and the only reason they care if they die is because then they can't make any money off of, you know, dead chickens. Um, <laughs> it has nothing to do with your health, basically. And the last thing I really wanted to talk about with this topic was the omega-3 eggs. You know, a lot of people talk to me, oh, I got the ones that are omega-3 enhanced, because I, I do, I'm a big promoter of omega-3. But the omega-3 eggs, we want to avoid these, um, basically because the chickens are fed a very poor quality form of omega-3. It's usually already gone, um, been oxidized and gone rancid. And, you know, they also are more perishable than the regular, um, just free-range organic eggs. You know, if you're able to contact um, the farmer, though, like if you go to um, a farmer's market and get your eggs, you can find out if they're feeding the chickens um, seaweed or kelp, and that's a much better source of uh, omega-3 for the chickens. Um, ideally, personally, I would just go with the organic, cage-free, or free-range eggs. That's by far the best. A brand that I found from Whole Foods that, you know, I, I highly promote. And I've heard a lot of other guys that are, you know, world-renowned nutritionists promote is a brand called Friends. F-R-E-N-Z. They come in a pack of six, and they cost about five bucks. But, you know, it's a little pricey, but again, it's your health, so you decide. I mean, if you're a person that drives a brand-new car or wears, you know, $200 pair of jeans or shoes or something like that, I mean, and then you roll your eyes at this, it's basically just reevaluate your priorities you know it's your health um, another great option is you know to find a farmer and and this way you can for those of you that shop at Whole Foods or at Whole Foods yeah go to the farmers market you could find a farmer and then that way you can be sure of the quality of the eggs and while we're talking about this omega-3 topic um, I also think it's important for you guys to know that you know commercially raised eggs have an omega-3 to omega-6 ratio of about one omega-3 to every 20 omega-6s, you know, and we already have a big enough problem in America, actually in the world, with our omega-3 to, om to omega-6 ratios, so we don't want to do anything to offset these anymore, you know, an overabundance of omega-6 fatty acids f facilitates the development of inflammation in our bodies, so we definitely want to stay away from from the omega-6s, you know, we get a lot of that from our grains and stuff like that as well, you know, and also anti-inflammatories, they are amongst the most sold drugs in the world, you know? Ideally, we want an omega-6 to omega-3 ratio of 1 to 1. You know, maybe as high as 1 to 3 or 1 to 4 is acceptable, but currently the average in America is about 25 omega-6s to 1 omega-3, and it's not uncommon to see it as high as 50 to 1. So, so of course, you know, in an upcoming video, I'll be talking about, you know, some things we can do to bring our omega-3 to omega-6 ratios back to or closer to the ideal range. So make sure you subscribe because I don't want you guys to miss part two about how um, the best way to consume eggs. You know, thanks again for watching. You guys take care, and I'll be back soon.